Good evening, Birian. We are on the third Wednesday of Mission Sempasis Month, giving God the glory through missions. Tonight's lesson, we will be looking in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Please open your Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. In verse 7 of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, it says here, Therefore, as he abound in everything, in faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this tonight. I pray, Lord, that you set my heart right with you right now. Cleanse me, forgive me, Lord, from my sin. I pray, Lord, the things that you will reveal to us, help us, Lord, to learn from you. Prepare our hearts. Pray, Lord, for our brethren, that you continue to be with them. Uh, those who are sick, I pray, Lord, that you give the wisdom to the doctors that help them, that, that they may, uh, that you would heal them. And also, Lord, I pray uh, that your name be honored and glorified as we study your word. I pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So tonight we'll be looking about uh, about growing in giving. Paul will now write about other churches and their example in giving. Paul shows he considers both the opportunity and the willingness to give a gift from the grace of God. So we know that what the, the churches of Macedonia, the northern part of Greece was called Macedonia, and the southern part was called Achaia, and the city of Corinth was in the region of Achaia. Paul writes about the example he sees in the churches of Macedonia. We know that the composition of the churches of Macedonia were in cities such as Philippi, Thessalonica, and Berea. So here you will see Paul reports to the Corinthian Christians the example of the Macedonian Christians. The Macedonians, though they were in a great trial of affliction and though they were in deep poverty, not only just Paul, they, as in he, he wrote deep poverty, hindi nila sinabing poverty, but deep poverty, still gave generously, abounded unto the riches of their liberality. So why did Paul write about giving at all? What was he collecting money for? So we know that Paul was raising money to help the Christians in Jerusalem who were very poor. He had previously mentioned this effort in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. The poverty of the Macedonian is confirmed by, uh, by secular history. The Romans took most of their wealth. They were conquered by the Romans. Uh, and we know that and during this time, uh, those Christians, well, uh, I would say na kung paano sila uh, pinersecute, kaya nga nilagay na nakalagay doon, is it not uh, uh, na regarding about the afflictions? <clears throat> so, uh, despite of all these things na nangyayari sa kanila, still, they are willing for themselves na magbigay ng tulong. Para sa, they responded. So, Paul knew that the Macedonians gave in two ways. First, they gave according to their ability for their power, in the sense that in total, their gift wasn't very much. It was not a large gift. But secondly, since their heart was freely willing to give, were willing of themselves, and they gave in proportion to the little they did have, they gave beyond their ability, beyond their power. Look, kung paano ginamit ng Panginoon na kung i-empower niya ang bawat isa. See, we have our own limitations. But look, God can do great things through us if we just allow the Lord to work through us. So, uh, can you remember about the widow? Widow's giving in Luke chapter 21? Ito yung, ito yung illustration na pinapopoint na sa atin ngayon. She only gave two mites, which was a very small amount of money. In that sense, she gave according to her ability. So, nevertheless, since she gave all she had, after all, she might have kept one mite to herself. She gave beyond her ability. See, the same principle of giving was evident in the Macedonian Christians. 
The poor widow's might was beyond the rich man's magnificence because it came out of a richer mind. Paul didn't have to beg for money from the Macedonian Christians, which he wouldn't have done anyway. Instead, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift. So, you will see here that the, 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 the Macedonian is begging Paul. Because they were, uh, look, Paul, uh, you, you receive our gift. See, it's the privilege of giving, not Paul who begged them for money. The Macedonian Christians didn't have much to give. They really wanted to give. They saw it as a privilege to give. True Christians' generosity can't be measured by how much one has to give. Often those who have less are more generous with what they have. The example of the Macedonians is practical proof that true generosity is not the prerogative of those who enjoy an adequacy of means. The most genuine liberality is frequently displayed by those who have least to give. Christian giving is estimated in terms not of quantity but of sacrifice. The Macedonian Christians gave far beyond what Paul hoped for. What made their giving so spectacular? It, it wasn't the amount. It was that they first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Why were the Macedonians such a good example of giving? Because they first gave their own selves to the Lord. Then they gave their trust to Paul and the other apostles. That's, that's the reason why. Remember all the, 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 the missionary board that we have? All the missionaries that we are supporting? We, we, we gave our, our, our faith promise to support all those missionaries. Because we first we, we gave ourselves unto the Lord. And then of course, and then we trusted those missionaries that we sent uh, the, the financial support. And also not only financial support, but also uh, with our prayer. See, look at the investment na ginagawa natin. Uh, see, we are doing God's business. See, the Macedonian Christians gave far beyond what Paul hoped for. So, nakita natin kung paano uh, uh, ginamit ng Panginoon ang it, itong mga uh, Macedonian people. Now he is encouraging the Corinthians. They, ito yung binibigay na example ni Paul sa mga uh, Corinthian believers. Giving is a work of God's grace in us. So as we go back in verse 7, it says here, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. Ano yung sinasabi ni Paul dito na grace? Look at the context. Alam nyo, marami ngayon mga tao na nagsasabi na there's so many excuses that people attempt to use when they do not give. Number one is that I can't afford to give. See, we are in a pandemic. Paano kami makakapag-afford? See, I just can't do it. It won't make any difference. It's all about money. This grace giving, look at at the context, give us the importance of our abounding or going beyond the norm. It is give, given equal importance with faith, trusting in God, utterance, preaching the word of God, knowledge, studying the word of God, diligence, working for God, and love, essence of God in our lives. Abound in this grace also or the, in the same way. So number one, as we studied it, why give? Giving makes me more like God. John 3, 16, 8, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Can we deny this fundamental truth about God? As Christians, we are to emulate God to those around us. Christians need like to be quiet. Growing more like the Lord means growing in His grace. 
2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Giving draws me closer to God. Matthew 6, 21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If giving wasn't important to God, why would He spend so much time in His Word talking about it? Our attitude about giving reveals much about our spiritual growth. We come into this world as selfish little human beings. Like baby Christ doesn't care about mom or dad. As we mature, we learn that life isn't about us. The same is true of Christians. We are born again by receiving God loves me. Jesus died for me. God wants to bless me. As, a, as we mature, we discover that Christian life isn't all about us either. We begin to look around us and see the need of others. As we grow in grace, we learn to give because we become closer to God's heart. Giving is the antidote to materialism. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, change, Charge them that are enriched in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Materialism is destroying families, focusing on things instead of people. Money is not the root of all evil, but the love of money is. And then giving strengthens my faith. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith say the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the window of windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it Faith is taking God at his word believing the promise What are some other promises God God gives us concerning giving. Giving is an investment for eternity. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 18 to 19 that they do good, that they be rich in good work, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Things do not last. They aren't meant to. Everything is meant to be replaced. More and more, we are living in a throw-away society. What have you thrown away recently? Did it surprise you? Alam nyo, sa pandemic ngayon, people acknowledge na before uh, they were uh, collecting cars. But many right now that they were selling. Dahil they just stay at uh, they just stay home uh, hindi nila kailangan and then of course wala nang walang color coding so you can only use one car so uh, you don't need two or three four so uh, and then you you will see here na kung ano yung ano lang yung mga bagay na kailangan only the souls of men women boys and girls will last for all eternity are we making eternal investments? Giving brings personal blessing. Acts 20 verse 35, I have showed you all things, how that soul laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Interesting that this is the only place this is recorded but it's still true. There are benefits to a life characterized by giving. Proverbs 11.25 The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Luke 6.38 Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. We certainly should never give in order to get but there are blessings that God promises if we will give. Our lives will be blessed beyond measure. 
Kaya nga in Malachi, is it not in Malachi 3, uh, 10b, Prove me now herewith, say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open your the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Number two, how to give? Give willingly. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7a, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart. Willing hearts giving to the Lord is what Paul is talking about here. Ungodly men have twisted this to say, Whatever you decide to give, that will be fine with the Lord. Paul isn't talking about the amount here. He is talking about the attitude of our hearts towards giving. Remember in uh, First Chronicles chapter 29, here it was David, by his example, exhort the people to give willingly. To give willingly. So, in verse, seven of, verse 9 of that chapter, you, uh, as I would read, Then the people rejoice for, for that they offered willingly, because with perfect heart, perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord and David the king also rejoiced with great joy look at the heart they give willingly see uh, this is the time na in encourage ni David na yeah, in chapter 28 verse 20 David encouraged Solomon to build a temple it's a, a big project so it needs uh, a lot of materials na needs of a lot of things uh, para ma fulfill yung project na to. so he encouraged the people he leads the people that they give willingly tonight is we need to give willingly to continue that we continue to support those missionaries that uh, na na nagiiikot ngayon rem, uh, na nag nagdedeputation ngayon so, uh, na hindi, uh, hindi sila maka, uh, makaikot because of the pandemic. But again, it's up to us, na, uh, to us Christians to answer the call for these people that we give willingly. And then, give thankfully. In Psalms 116 verse 12, What shall I render unto the Lord for all His benef benefits towards me? So, he, in Matthew chapter 10 verse 8 heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead cast out the devils freely uh, receive, freely give our giving should be with an attitude of thanksgiving for all that God has done for us in Psalms 107 verse 21 to 22 all that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his work works with rejoicing refusing to give indicates an unthankful heart are we thankful for what the Lord has done in our lives and then three is that give cheerfully in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7b, let, So let him give, not gradually or by necessity, for God loves the cheerful giver. Not gradually, not with sorrow or grief, of necessity, in distress or against our will. God is looking for those who will give with an, with an attitude of joy, cheerful. And then give expectantly. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Expecting a harvest. Again, this isn't give to get, like the name it and claim it crowd. But expect God to do what he said he would do. This is what Paul mean when he wrote about purpose in his heart. When we give we need to give with, a, with purpose, expecting God to take it and use it to be a blessing to others. And then, last one is our giving produces glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all the glory of God. Good works give God glory. 
Matthew 5:16 Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Surely our giving produces the opportunity for our light to shine in a greater capacity to those around us. Our giving provides the opportunity to reach the lost with the message of the gospel and it also indicates that God's grace has been active in our lives. We must realize that to a great extent the only thing some people see of Christianity is Christianity is our lives. Remember, we bear his dear name. Our life is for others to view. A living example. Men praise us or blame and measure our Savior by us. Based upon our own personal lifestyle and our own personal generosity, what others seeing in our Christianity? Are they seeing a person who cares about their soul? Are they seeing someone whose life has been changed by Christ? Or are they seeing someone who is self-centered, uncaring, and not interested in the work of God? Our giving reflects a lot about us. A Christ Christian giving is a mark of spiritual maturity. It is a testimony of our faith in the Word of God and in the God of, of the Word. What are we saying to others and to the Lord by our giving? Say in conclusion, giving makes an eternal difference. Giving is an important value to build our own lives upon. Giving is getting close to the heart of God. The scripture is filled with examples of great givers, but not so vivid as Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. As we seek to grow in our relationship to Him and to develop or build our lives on biblical principles and in accordance with biblical values, we need to be reminded of the importance of this grace. See, that's with the Lord that we continually to look unto Jesus. Remember that He is the author and finisher of our faith. To God be the glory. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for your word that you have shared. Lord, I pray that we continue to uh, shower to us thy grace and thy blessing. And use us, Lord, to be a blessing to others. Lord, I pray that you continue to increase our faith. And I pray, Lord, that you help us to grow in our giving. Lord, we cannot do this alone. We need you in our lives. Help us. And help us that, we, that you will use us mightily. That everything that we do, that people will see Jesus in our lives. I pray, Lord, uh, that those people listening listening right now you know what's in their heart Lord, you know what's in their hearts right now i pray lord that you bless them help them and i pray lord uh, that you would grant the desires of their heart and i pray lord that you would use them to a blessing to the, to the uh, blessing to the people around them thank you lord for your love we love you, Lord, because you first love us. Thank you for that love. And help us also that we may bestow them the same love to others, O oh God. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.